Henry the Navigator, Prince of Portugal. Ferdinand and Isabella drew Castile, Aragon, and Granada together into one Spanish kingdom. But Portugal, the kingdom on Spain's western coast, kept its independence from the rest of Spain. Portugal was a small kingdom, not much wider than the state of Florida. It had a long coast with many beaches and harbors. Wild cats and wild pigs roamed the countryside. Eagles and falcons soared overhead. Flamingos stood in the marshes at the water's edge. The Portuguese were known for their grapes, their olives, and their tripe. Tripe was a medieval dish made of the lining of cow's stomachs cooked together with calves' feet, onions, cow fat, and fermented apple cider. The Portuguese thought tripe was one of the greatest delicacies in the world. Because Portugal had such a long coastline, it was easy for the Portuguese people to build boats and sail them. One prince of Portugal, Henry, wanted to use these boats for more than short trips. He wanted the Portuguese to learn how to sail farther than anyone else in the world. Prince Henry was the fourth son of the King of Portugal. That meant he would never inherit the throne, so he didn't need to worry about learning to rule Portugal. He could use his money and his time in another way, to make the Portuguese into great sailors and explorers. Because of his love of the sea, Prince Henry became known as Henry the Navigator. Henry first began to think about building a fleet of seagoing ships when he was a young man helping his brothers fight in North Africa. Henry's father had sent them down to North Africa to capture an important Muslim trading city. Merchants from Africa came to this city with ivory, gold, silver, and salt. Merchants from India came with spices, pepper, cloves, and nutmeg. In the Middle Ages, there were no refrigerators, so people put a lot of spices in their meat. That way they could eat the meat even when it started to spoil. The spices covered up any bad tastes. Spices were so important that pepper was almost worth its weight in gold. But Muslim traders knew that the Portuguese were Christians who had driven the Muslims out of their country. And as soon as the Portuguese took control of the city, Muslim traders began to avoid it. Henry realized that if the Portuguese wanted gold and ivory from West Africa, they would do better to sail down the African coast and trade with the West African tribes face to face. So he hired shipbuilders to build new ships that were fast and light, perfect for exploring strange waters. He paid mapmakers to draw new maps of the coastlines so that sailors would know exactly where they were when they came ashore. And he built a school for navigation. Navigating, following a map to a certain destination, is hard to do at sea because there aren't any roads, trees, or landmarks. So Henry's sailors had to learn how to read star maps so that they could find the North Star and other important stars at different times during the year. They had to learn to use an astrolabe, a special measuring tool, to measure how far the sun, or the North Star, lay above the horizon. And then they had to be able to calculate a ship's position from this information. They had to know how to use a compass, an instrument with a magnetic needle that always pointed north and they had to be able to calculate a ship's speed. In the Middle Ages, sailors measured how fast a ship was moving by tying knots at regular intervals on a long rope. Then they would put a piece of wood weighted with metal on one end of the rope and wind the other end up onto a reel. As the ship sailed, the sailors would toss the wooden float off the back of the ship and turn over a glass which had just enough sand in it to run out in exactly one minute. They would let the rope unwind while the sand trickled out of the glass. Then they would stop the reel and count the number of knots along the length of rope that had unwound. This would tell them the speed of the ship. Today, a boat is still said to be traveling at so many knots. Once Henry's sailors learned how to navigate through unfamiliar waters, they were ready to head south to Africa. But they were frightened. No one had ever sailed down the coast of Africa before. They called the mysterious waters that lay down south the Sea of Darkness.
They were sure that sea monsters and whirlpools lay in this sea of darkness. They were afraid that the ocean became so shallow that ships would wreck on the sea's bottom. They were certain that strong currents would pull them off into nowhere so that they could never return. And they thought that the sun down south was so hot that the sea water boiled and roasted men alive. Henry tried to convince his men to sail further south. He paid for expedition after expedition, but all of his sailors were too frightened to go very far. Finally, after fourteen expeditions, a brave explorer named Gil Aeanus dared to venture down into the Sea of Darkness, and he discovered that the water there was the same as the water closer to home. Gil Aeanus set out on his adventure in 1434. In the years after his great journey, the Portuguese began to follow his example. They sailed further and further down the coast of West Africa to trade for ivory, salt, gold, jewels, ostrich eggs, seal skins, and slaves. Although Henry the Navigator had hoped that his ships would find their way to India, he died before this could happen. You see... Maps in the Middle Ages didn't show how huge Africa was. No one had ever sailed all the way around the continent, so map makers couldn't draw an accurate picture of Africa, and no one knew exactly how far they would have to sail to get around the tip of Africa. Some sailors thought that Africa might stretch all the way down to the bottom of the world.